want a rose for the lady. Five bucks a pop. I'll take one. Oh, yeah? Well, I want one, too. Eight bucks. But you just said the man suddenly skyrocketed. You all saw it. Alright children, today we're going to pick off where we left off last week. So last week I taught you about supply and demand on their own. This week I'm going to be talking about supply and demand together on one graph. So we have supply is, you recall, is upward sloping. As prices go up, producers want to make more of whatever product this is in order to, create, to, to earn a profit. So as price goes up, they're more likely to want to make whatever it is that they have because there's a chance to earn more money at the moment. All right, demand a little bit different. Uh, demand is downward sloping because the law of demand states that price and quantity demanded are inversely related. So like that, uh, as price comes down, when you're at the store, you want to buy things the cheaper they are, as long as it's something that you want. So let's say the cookies are now cheaper. You're going to buy two boxes instead of one, like that kind of thing. Okay, so right here, this is equilibrium. When we hit equilibrium, that means our demand and our supply, our quantity demanded and our quantity supplied are going to be equal for this price. Whatever the price is, this is what we're agreeing on right now. So the amount that the businesses want to produce for this price is equal to the amount that we want to purchase for that same price. All right, so this is called equilibrium price. And equilibrium quantity. Equilibrium quantity. Mm -hmm. So let's say, I don't know, this is uh, $2. Let's pretend that this quantity, this equilibrium price right now is $2. So for $2 for a box of cookies, the amount that we want to purchase is equal to the amount that the producers want to make right now. Uh, and now, remember, like we talked about the other day, these curves can shift. Anything other than a change in price is going to cause these curves to shift. So let's say that, hmm, let's say that people go on diets. So I'm going to say for this one, we have a diet. Going all right, so people are going on diets. Does that affect the amount that the producers want to make, or does that affect the amount that the demanders or the consumers want to purchase? A diet would be consumers deciding that they're no longer gonna be eating cookies because they don't wanna have all that sugar or all that flour or whatever. And so demand is gonna decrease and shift to the left. Now, I'll call this D1, so this is our new demand curve. Oh, that is an ugly arrow. Good gravy. All right, there we go. All right, so our demand curve shifted to the left. Now, we have a new equilibrium price. And if you look here, we can show what happened with a, an arrow in here. Our price decreased. Cookies are now cheaper because people don't want them. Our quantity decreased as well. Remember, think of this corner as being zero. So this is zero price and zero quantity. So as it moves into the left, we're gonna have a decrease in the quantity uh, that are being bought and sold and a decrease in the price right now. Uh, do not, if, if, the, if the demand curve shifts, supply didn't change. The quantity supply changed. The quantity supplied that businesses were willing to produce is now less than what it used to be and that's because the price is now lower. There's less incentive, there's less profit incentive to produce that. All right, I'm gonna start another clean one here real quick. I'm gonna go through some more examples with you. So we did diets. Now, let's say that we're gonna do, first I'll set up my graph, price, there's supply, there's demand, this is our quantity, this is our equilibrium price, and down here I gotta label it quantity. And then over here now, let's say input prices have changed. Input, and I'm going to say flour is cheaper. All right, so let's think about this like this. Another one. If an input price is, if an input price changes, what happens? So first off, an input price is something that you have to pay. So it's the cost of producing an item. 
Uh, I'm gonna keep making this cookies. And the way cookies are related to flour, if flour is now cheaper, you need to think, is it easier to produce cookies or harder? Well, you use flour to make cookies. It's cheaper to get flour now. So now, for the same amount of money, I can produce more cookies if I'm a, if I'm a cookie manufacturer. So the supply is going to increase for cookies, and so the supply curve is going to shift to the left. There we have S1. Yunk, 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 yunk. Our price has decreased, and our quantity demanded and quantity supplied has increased. Now remember, don't think about this as the demand shift, uh, demand increasing, because demand did not increase. The curve has not shifted. The quantity demanded has increased. Now we want more cookies because they're cheaper. So the quantity demanded or the amount that we buy are gonna increase because they're now cheaper. All right, let's do a couple more. So that price, still got quantity. Still doing cookies, yeah. All right, and now with the cookies, let's say milk price of, oh God, price of milk increases. All right, so let's say that the cry, price, the price of milk at the grocery store has increased. It now costs more for consumers. How are cookies and milk related? I would say that they are complements. They go together. So if cookies and milk are related and the price of milk is now cheaper, we're gonna buy more milk and in turn, because of that, we're gonna end up buying more cookies. So the demand for cookies is gonna increase and the demand curve will shift to the right. We'll end up with a higher price for cookies and a higher quantity of cookies being bought and produced. Okay, let's do one more here. Hmm, what should I do next? All right, next we'll do one more input because that's what you're going to see the most with supply changing. All right, so let's say wages for cookie producers increases. Wages for cookies, pr cookie producers increase. Is that going to affect the demand or the supply? I know that you're going to start thinking, oh, if people have more money, they're going to buy more cookies. But you need to think about it like this. Wages are going to be what you pay for for labor. So that's a cost for the producer. So that's going to be supply. Income would affect demand, but wages are going to affect supply. So if the supply, um, if the wages for cookie producers increase and now it costs more to pay people to make cookies, are they going to make more or less cookies? They're going to make less because if they have to pay each individual worker more money, then they're probably going to let a couple people go because they only have so much money per day to be able to pay laborers. So what will happen is the supply of cookies will shift to the left and decrease. You will now have a higher price for cookies because there are less cookies on the shelf. Okay, so again, think about it like this. Let's say I have $10 per day to pay uh, laborers to make cookies for me. If I used to pay $5 per day to each worker and now I have to pay $8, I'm gonna have to let one of those people go because I only have $10 a day to produce these cookies. I don't have the 16 that it will now take. So hopefully that makes sense and I'm gonna spend the rest of this semester driving that point home.